The Manning River turtle is a very special species. It's a, it's a native Australian short-necked turtle and it's confined only to the Manning River uh, catchment in, in New South Wales. It's found nowhere else in the world. It's got an ancient lineage of about 55 million years, so it's, a, it's an incredible species. The Manning River turtle lives in the, in the Manning River system from the middle of the catchment through to the upper reaches of the catchment and it's found in the major rivers and, and creek tributaries of the Manning River. Scientists believe it prefers the cooler flowing systems. The Manning River turtle is important because it's found nowhere else in the world other than the Manning catchment and it's threatened with extinction. It's rare in the wild and it's under pressure. So we have to do our, do our best to secure this species in the wild and, and protect it so that that ancient lineage, that 55 million years of its existence can continue uh, into the future. We've only found one nest of the Manning River turtle in the wild and we need to know more about where they nest and how they nest and, and nest management. We're calling on landholders and interested members of the public when they're in nature in the Manning River catchment to keep an eye on the banks of major creeks and rivers in the system and to report any sighting that they believe to be a Manning River turtle nest. Whether it's an intact nest or whether it's a raided nest, that's the sort of information that we need in order to manage the species better. Very little is known about Manning turtle nesting behaviour. However, they are closely related to the Bell's turtle that is found on the New England tableland. Bell's turtle nesting is, by comparison, well understood, and likely Manning turtle have similar nesting habits. Bell's turtles usually nest within 10 metres of the water's edge and up to 2.5 metres above the water level. They nest in a variety of substrates like sand, sandy loam, clay loam, shingle and gravel deposits. Nesting starts from October and goes through to January. Often nesting coincides with rainfall that softens the soil, making digging easier. You may be fortunate and see Manning turtle during a late afternoon storm, sticking their heads up above the water and venturing out on the sand and gravel banks to nest. This is a location where, where we search for freshwater turtle nesting. It's adjacent to quite a deep water hole. Uh, it's an area that uh, is in full sun. There's, there's no shading at this site. It's within 10 metres of, of the water and it elevates quite quickly off, off this deep water hole here, up to about two to two and a half metres. So that gives us the key attributes in terms of proximity to where freshwater turtles are and suitable nesting habitat. The other advantage here is that the, the soil is quite loamy, sandy and, and friable, so it's very easy for the turtles to be able to dig in this particular substrate. A really good area to keep a close eye on uh, as we move through the rest of this season. In terms of timing of, of when to go looking for nests, uh, freshwater turtles on, on the tablelands uh, look for a trigger usually associated with a rainfall event. Uh, and the main thing that's happening there is that the, the substrate adjacent to the water holes uh, gets a little bit easier to dig in. And so that, that's one of the best times to go looking for freshwater turtle nests. And you want to look around sort of around November into December here on the coast. So as, as everybody can see here, um, the bank's quite sheer to in front of us here. And but the best of the, the nesting habitat in the sun and with the nice soil is over there. So likely the turtles come to the, the end of the pool, um, which is often where these deposition sites are. And the, the cattle tracks have created quite a nice, easy access for them. So they'll be sticking their heads out through the water here and then climbing up in a spot like this. And uh, especially if your soil is going to be more um, clay-like, um, there's going to be more tracks that are going to get held in the soil here. But this is the kind of spot that you might look for claw marks in the, in the little banks here and for skid marks coming up through the middle. If this was maybe just slightly higher from the water, 
in this in terms of this run you're likely to see nests being laid here or at the bottom of this run here as well um, so they they come up from the water hit this first bank and lay a nest and then some will continue further up and get just to the top and then lay a nest and in a spot like this where we've got a, a nice gradual bank then they're likely to continue a little bit further up and create a nest up up there or above here uh, like we've shown before some of the tracks that you might see in this substrate uh, it's it's very difficult because it's a it's a very loose sandy loam so you would only be seeing tracks you know maybe maybe the day or two after if, if the moisture stays wet and the rainfall is not too high uh, but because there is a little bit of loam if you are lucky you might see some of this smoothing which would be from the plustron as, as the turtles climbing up and on these banks here they'll, they'll often come to some sort of some sort of rise that gets them a little bit more elevation and so the body of the turtle will be sitting here and with their back legs they would excavate a nest chamber that would look like this. This is typically what we might look for, uh, is just a very slight depression in the ground and as, as the rain falls and it sort of settles to, a, to almost a sort of level. During the nesting season, if you, if you go out at, across your property along the river banks uh, and you come across what we can see here, which is a depression that's been excavated and you can see these fragments of, of eggshells around the side. This is a classic example of a freshwater turtle nest that's been raided by a fox. Uh, these shell fragments, all, all of the eggs are gone. Uh, this is the most likely thing that, that you'll find. It's really hard to find freshwater turtle nests because they disguise them so effectively. If you're out in, in the wild on the banks of the rivers and creeks and you see a nest, please report it to Midcoast Council, to Hunter Local Land Services or the Manning River Turtle Group.